crazy for this game, guys. We could be seeing the North American champions in the next half an hour. And we're ready to go into the matchup. Let's see what these teams have provided for themselves in the early. It looks like pretty orthodox buys going out. The potions, the wards as well. We don't see the supports grabbing any type of boots here, so they're going to be quickly going for that support utility and no aggression. We do see some a little bit of aggression here as the teams start to mill about and figure out who can play the, the fog of war game the best. Dyrus doing his best up top to spam those emotes. Yeah, he is the man who originally spammed laugh every 12 <laughs> seconds. Most known for it with Singed, but any champion will do. I want to point out Batoy's build, though. Uh, six wards and a fairy charm. He, got, he is all, or sorry, not fairy charm, but uh, a couple health potions, but six wards on Batoy's opening build. He really wants to control this map vision. He wants to know everything that's going on. I think they realize they're level one team. Actually, I don't know. Both level one teams are pretty good. I think they just really, really want to keep track of what Odd One is up to and what is kind of moving around here for the solo mid lineup. Yeah, it's going to look good for them. As you said, those six wards, and that's going to help the strong early game. You can see if they want to go around and place these wherever they want, they're going to be able to do that and then be safe in lane still. That's the thing about placing wards early. You still got to leave yourself some for late. You might have to have somebody else buy that. But with six of them, you're going to be clear and safe throughout pretty much most of this early game. And you're going to be able to stay in lane a lot longer as well. You're not going to have to go back as much. And you can play a lot more dangerously in lane as well. Yeah, now we're going to see everyone's going to retreat back to the jungle just like last time. Playing pretty confidently and, and really relying on, on their own early, mid, and late games as, as opposed to two early jungle invades to build an advantage here. Janna Shield making the jungle easy for Dominate. That is going to be a jungle Nunu. And this is really good for them. Again, that Nunu makes your late game carry, or it makes your carry skill in a late game for free, basically, and make it a very easy time here for PewDiePie on Kaelin. As long as he has a decent early game, he's going throughout this game. Dominate's going to finish up his golden buff, and he has saved his smite as well, which means he might go for something aggressive early on. But the odd one did go for his lizard, so we'll see if that matches up well for them. So you can see TSM Solomid coming into this match already considering that Dignitas is going to try and counteract what they just played. They're not doing any sort of that this time. They haven't even tried to really go into the jungle, so they're playing this one much safer. They know they can kind of sit back, but they cannot get complacent. Dignitas will take the lead if given the chance, and they are still a very powerful team to be reckoned with. Team Solo Mid still has to stay on the top of the game for this one, even though Dignitas is on their heels. Yeah, TSM's gonna play the reaction choice right here. It's actually very fortunate for them that they did not go uh, for a, an early jungle pick with something like Shivana because they needed that hard to escape from Skarner to make that good for them. They needed that one pick there. That Skarner is really gonna be the linchpin of what Solomid can do in this game too. If he does not have a good game, if he does not get off good pulls, if he does not initiate well, it's gonna be very, very scary for Solomid because they won't have an in into Dignitas' lineup. But if he has that great game, they can dismantle what Dignitas is trying to do. <laughs> you can see Reginald, Scar in middle just kind of poking each other here as Odd One sits down on the wing and waits to get into this matchup. But the wards down there will let them know. Crumbs playing very solid. They did get that lane switch up, as I said before, before we went to the break. And here comes the Odd One from the left side. The Valkyrie over so she cannot escape from the back. An amazing move there by Chaos. He would have taken so much damage walking over that Valkyrie burn that he was forced to walk in front of his turret in the escape path for Team Solo Mid. Very well mechanically played. Yep, and there is that roaming opportunity. They came down right there, the three on one at the turret. Poor Crumbs only level two, and I don't think he, he can even teleport to the turret on revive because he'll just get dived on the second that happens. It's special on Soraka. That pick is actually very, very strong. Reginald actually forced to flash away in the mid lane. Skara putting out a lot of damage. So Skara, a big MVP. He's looking to cheer real first. First turret kill, really, really important for Solo Mid. He's actually gonna jump in right there, Skara. The flash body slam, but a great black shield that Reginald's gonna keep him alive. He's gonna pause out. Wow, already a counteract turret kill. Dignitas really, really playing the aggressor here as well on the top lane. Yeah, this is going to be huge. It's something you see in that lane switch up quite a bit. Usually we were seeing the turret go down to about 10% health. And then that lane is kind of left alone as they switch the lanes back. And then you can take the top lane whenever somebody grabs Dragon. But these two turrets both going down at that four minute mark. And I'm very surprised at this lane in mid. Big props to Scar for really taking Reginald out right now. He's got to be dodging all of these dark bindings to make it work. Reginald was quickly out of mana, but both of them can push at the exact same rate. That Tormented Soil is going to take down those caster minions, the barrel as well right behind them, and then their other abilities to just clean up that front wave. So with that happening, 
Mascara is doing very well at controlling how Reginald is having to play. Yeah, that's going to be a big point in mid lane around seven and then nine minutes in yep. when the Golem buffs spawn. If one's going to get stolen away, it's going to really set the pace for how that mid lane goes. You know, both Scara on Astragus and Reginald on Morgana are going to want that Golem buff for great amounts of mana regeneration, lower cooldowns. It's going to allow them to shove out their, their minion waves, you know, crush the minions so that they can go and roam and make things happen. If Reginald gets to roam, you saw what happened in game one. He had a crushing early performance on Morgana, as did everyone else on his lineup. If Scar can stop him from roaming by outpushing him, that's going to be a scary place for, t for Team Solo mid. But if the blue goes in the way of Solo mid in general, or they even just trade golems equally, it's going to be overall better for TSI. So we do see, as you said, those minutes coming up around the seven minute mark going to be very big for mid. The jungler is somewhat showing presence in middle, but that's just to say, hey, I'm here. If you're going to pressure a lot, I'm probably going to make something happen about it. These impact plays trying to come out from TSM's side. They do have that first blood in their favor right now. And game one, a huge aggression coming out once again. Reginald getting caught out. Dom, uh, Adwan rather, coming from behind. Maybe able to finish this one up. Reginald stays alive, and they turn it around. The odd one in the right spot at the right time. Well, Reginald, such great patience as well. Ran back and forth, waited, 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 and got the dark fighting from point blank range. The barrel did not hit on him, and that seemed like a miscast by Scar because he didn't even lead him at all. A nice attempt there on the trade kill, but no, odd one showing up, of course, at the right time as well. To make that happen, still limit off to a 2 0 lead. And it's actually lucky for Dignitas he didn't die a minute later because that golem buff is about to spawn. And that's going to be a very big turning point in his mid lane. So you can see Crumbs as he gets aggressive in his lane. And not even aggressive, but has to farm his lane. He knows he can't push out too far. Going back for golems to keep himself with that experience. He needs to get his build up. He's going to be a huge factor for them in this poke composition late game. If a lane like mid league gets shut down, you're losing a lot of damage in your composition. Yeah, so we'll see what happens here because Needle is actually doing okay in minions. Third one minions not too bad. Looks like he's going for an early catalyst because he needs the extra sustain to stay alive. Of course, it's putting points in that primal surge as well for that self-heal. But you're still seeing a lot of top lane aggression at the same side for Jignitas. This Caitlyn, Janna really, really going for the pressure. They put a number of wards down because they don't want to get caught out by Reginald and the odd one. That said, Reginald has just left his mid lane. We'll see how that pans out for him. Dignitas are going for some pressure still at this top turret. So you can even see Scar's gameplay a lot more comfortable on this Gragas. He's got more mobility than Ryze does. A little bit faster as a caster in general in movement speed. And we're going to see Cutie Pie getting caught out here. A beautiful caliber net coming from I'm a Cutie Pie. Gets him through the bush and avoiding that vision. Patoy being saved by the exploding cask. Very nicely done. A little bit of utility out of the power of Gragas. Yeah, it's a very scary situation for Dignitas. Both of them using their abilities very well to survive that encounter. Patoy actually having to burn exhaust the lower Reginald's damage out, but you see how low he got dropped by taking a uh, Dark Biting to the face. Yeah, Reginald doesn't really want to deal with that so much. His ultimate is down, so he doesn't have much of a trade there. And of course, Scar is showing up just in time to keep them alive. It's a scary situation though, but now Dignitas 3 strong. Looks like Blood Boil on Cutie Pine as well. But they're not going to go for that mid turn of pressure. They're still going to keep roaming around that map. And Cutie Pine's actually heading back towards that top lane. I thought maybe they'd donate Lizard buff, maybe they'd go and lane swap to the bottom. But no, right now, they're going to like the lanes as they are. Crumb's keeping himself farmed by going over uh, for his little golem camps down there. Let's see if Dominate is ever going to leave the jungle there. He's been farming almost the entire time. Yeah, Dominate was actually forced to do that last time, but this time maybe also feeling more comfortable in his role as Scar is. We're going to have to see if he can get himself into lane to help these guys out. Reginald grabbing his blue buff. They're going to return back around. Scar trying to clear this lane and deny Reginald that experience. I don't think he's going to get back to lane here just in time as he actually takes Wolves and probably go around for Wraiths as he sees his lane getting pushed. We see Skara making a move here. Let's see what he will decide to do. Yeah, he's going to get squatted by a ward though on the way. Body time comes up. We'll actually miss the barrel entirely. Not going to get much damage out of it. He's not going to go for any uh, golden steals as well. He's going to walk his way back out. Dyrus does have some great ward coverage here. You can see him just taking these golems down. He's very happy. Dominate just playing the farm world. He's going to drop down the minion wave in mid. He's not going to give up any gold whatsoever. And I think Dominate's goal right here is to be the main tank. You realize there's no real melee champions on this Dignitas lineup. Last time you saw they had Alistair. This time it's just on Nunu. And so he's just farming, farming, farming. The jungle was actually the richest member on the team. 
Already has double gold for 10. He's got the early oracles now at this point to try to crush down on Ward to deny vision. But he's been farming hardcore, so he can actually perform as a tank for this Dignitas lineup. So, Freak, the factor here is that Team Solo Mid has the lead this time, not because Dominate was counter jungle, but because of those few first kills, that early first blood. How is this counter, how is this actually acting for Dignitas? We see much more of an even game. Yeah, well, you know, Dignitas overall, I think their lane swaps have worked out better, so they're winning a lot in farm, and especially their jungler as well. Again, Dominate is really focusing on farming minions, so the gold is very close despite two kills. Two kills at this point should be worth about a thousand gold overall when you count assist, but that's not the case. They're only down 400 gold because Dignitas are relying on farm. And really, Dignitas are relying, uh, are really they're just kind of waiting for about the 15 minute mark. That's when they're going to really turn it on and go for sort of team oriented pushes. It's when they're going to have that, that max rank needly javelin. They're going to have a hopefully rank 2 explosive cask here from Skara when he reaches champion level 11. That's what they're kind of waiting for here. In the meantime, Dignitas are trying to farm as fast as possible. They don't care so much about ganks, especially if they can survive those encounters. What they need is just to hold on and make this mid-game for Dignitas to start pushing through their advantage. Yeah, they've really been focusing on continuously keeping themselves in lane and farming. At this point in the game last time, TSM had already made that 400 gold lead they had from the jungle into a 2,000 gold lead. Right now, it only sits at 300 still for the past six minutes. So Dignitas definitely changing up their strats staying in the face of TSM. They had too much time to roam last game. And right here, we see Chaos off in the bush. Cutie Pie getting very aggressive. Hemo play goes down. The extra damage to Cutie Pie. The flash in and the takedown. And the assassination from Chaos and Dyrus. Now, very, very well played there. Excellent, excellent jump in. Everyone burning all oh, their stuff to deal the damage. And the patience by Chaos was awesome. And two on two is way too strong for Solo mid. Outwin easily escaping away from Crumbs. This is the kind of pressure that Solon did need. They know that that push is going to happen about 50 minutes in. Dominate getting caught up by Reginald actually. It's going to take a lot of damage here. The stun comes off, and here comes the ultimate from Vatoy that Monsoon is turning just enough health to keep Dominate alive. They will dodge that dark binding. The Solon mid up to the 50 minute mark wants to play aggression, aggression, aggression. They're going to go for their second turret kill. They've already picked up three champions. This is the kind of game that TSM wants at this stage. Yeah, that was actually huge aggression by Reginald. You can just see the confidence in his play. Play. There was a 3v1 with a turret in between him and his team. And he said, you know what? I'm going to all I'm going to go for my dark binding and tormented soil. I probably won't fully take you down, but our team's going to be able to take this turret after. So the waste of my uh, my ultimate is just going to come back up when we need it anyways. Just great mental gameplay all around from Team Solo Mid on that. Yeah, they're doing exactly their job. They're roaming properly, they're showing up for these fights. Star does get his golden buff, so he's not getting those stolen away. It's allowing him to keep up in that mid lane. You see that 85 versus 80 minion mark from those two mid lane mages. They're equal in farm, but Reginald is creating more opportunities here. He's doing, uh, he's getting those ganks, and he's making turrets fall afterwards. On one and Crumbs in a fight of this bottom lane. Crumbs really taking a lot of damage. KX jumping in as well. Crumbs trying to hop away. He will be able to. But that was, that was very, very close because the odd one actually had pulled him in and failed, trying to buy enough time for Chaos to show up. We got four Dignitas in mid. Chaos coming down bottom again. He may find this out. Cutie Pie was the one to get caught last time. And Chaos maybe could get this. Crumbs chases out. He has a little bit of movement speed there. And it looks like he will be able to make it away as Chaos will not pursue and chase. Yeah, so we're 13 minutes and 45 seconds in, and Dignitas says, yep, now's the time for the push. They've got that Catalyst on Crumbs. He is level 9. He's back in the base, picked up his Sorcerer Shoes, and he's going to move on in. They've got a little bit of gold regeneration uh, on for Majoli. They've got Heart of Gold. They've got a little bit of ability power on Star, though not a ton. But they've got the big uh, item for Cutie Pie, which is that BF Sword. He kind of banked up for that, didn't find any Doran's Blade, and they're off the push right now. Barrel's coming out, and this is going to be Dignitas trying to do the best they can here. They're going to start pushing, 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 and we'll see if they can pick up turrets. I really like the BF Sword grab for Cutie Pie. He wants to stay on the outside. The ultimate from him, that ace in the hole, Gragas Barrel, as well into the Nidalee Javelin, is going to be huge damage. He's not really going to need to get any tanky items, or any items are going to have to keep him in the fight right now, because he's going to be doing that long range poke. So for him to get that build damage on the BF Sword as he continues to stack it, he'll be able to build the other items he needs to really sustain even harder in this lane. Their poke comp is somewhat going just the way they want it, 
once these items are completed, we're gonna see it in full effect. Yeah, Crumbs has shown up to the mid lane as well. Jonna and Caitlyn making their way back in. Dignitas are really gonna stay here as much as they can. Now the good thing for Dignitas is they have a summoner teleport. They can send Crumbs on a split push or to defend a split push and then get right back to the team and be in good shape. Reginald trying to black shield a Caitlyn ultimate. Deals physical damage, bro. Come on, dude. But the Javelin's gonna come up there, and they're gonna keep going. There we go, Chief Fight in range of Dominic gonna get caught up there. There's the initiation. A perfect barrel's gonna push Reginald away, but still, that initiation was great. Reginald took a lot of damage. Ignite not quite going to kill him. But you saw the odd one, the impale on the Dominate killed him right away. His Oracle's now gone. It's a very scary situation for Dickentoss. That initiation is very, very good for him. Yeah, they lost that blood boil they're gonna need on the AD carry. It really isn't gonna help on too many other people of this team. Maybe that Italy is going for someone else. She's going to AP build with a poke op. So it really won't matter too much. She'll be able to kind of throw out those attacks. They may be able to get down some turrets with the heal as well from her attack, giving attack speed. So with Nunu down, it makes the fight much harder for Cutie Pie to really do any damage other than that Peacemaker as well in the ultimate. Yeah, so now we're going to see what can Dignitas has to do about this little bit. It's very, very powerful. Crumbs is going to push a little bit down with Deox. Sulamid, again, they have the better team fight overall. They've got the ganks from that one for this dragon very easily. That's going to be theirs almost for sure. I do not expect a flash steal. And he's not going to go for it. That's going to be their dragon. Nice job, Sulamid. They're still trying to build themselves with advantages. Because they fight so well in the open field, they're going to keep pushing these open field engagements. Go for dragons. You know, to get these roams going down. Here in 5 on 5 with their turret, which is the chance for Skarner to get pulls in and make fights happen even better for Solar. Cyrus doing what he can to throw out some damage. The tides of blood. Looks like this mid turret may go down as the odd one gets locked up, taking out that cupcake. And they're just going to continue to laugh in front of the turret. Dyrus enjoying that. See, as they gather in mid here, nobody really going for that objective. The ward goes down. No real reason for it. The next turret to go down is that mid one. This is going to give Dignitas quite a bit of room in middle to do whatever they want, to enter the jungle wherever they want. Right now, they are not up in turrets, so this will even it out two to two. The four kills for TSM are really making Reggie dominant, though, and they gotta stop letting that happen. His initiation's being quite strong, and they are actually bunching up. They do not want to do that. The Soul Shackle and Hemo Plague are becoming way too much for them to handle, but they don't have that defensive mitigation for all that magic damage yet. Yeah, what Dignitas is doing right now is very, very smart. They're picking up the turret kill there. They split to the bottom as well, although KX has shown them to defend that, but if they, they can accelerate the game, they're going to mitigate a lot of the gold advantage. So Solomid got a lot of early gold with a couple of kills. Uh, they've gotten the dragon, of course. They've gotten some turrets. But Dignitas, oh my god, he's actually jumped up on a KX. A lot of damage we dealt. He does not have much mana. Gold comes off, and he's going to get away. Nice face hanging there by a special, a true support. And take that bullet to the face. This is good for Dignitas, though. If they can get a lot of turrets quickly, early game turrets mean more, because 750 gold is more important when no one has any. This is how Dignitas is going to turn this gold lead at least back to equal or maybe in their favor by picking up a lot of these turrets. They've got all three added turrets so far, but they can push for the middle turrets as well very, very soon. This is the, this is the right turn events here for Dignitas to keep on this. Dragon going to be coming up soon here. We do see Dominate chasing the odd one out of this one. Much more man on the side of Dominate, so the odd one really doesn't want to mess with this. Dyer is taking a, quite a bit of a chunk of his health there from the Javelin of Crumbs. The lane going back to mid once again. Everybody gathering here. The top and outer turrets are down for both teams right now. Mid turret almost fallen for TSM. Yeah, they're going to see if they can push has back. Yeah, they, they got that outer one a little while ago. Finally got the poke in. But Dignitas are going to want to keep playing that same game plan. They're going to want to stay up in front. They're going to keep doing this. Dominate gets the ice blast on a Kayak. This could be a very scary place for him. Uh, he will Valkyrie over the wall. Good aim there, making sure not to fizzle that one. Safe vicious to take lessons. I hear he uh, fizzled it uh, a little while ago in this tournament. But they are staying safe right here. It's a nice roaming attempt here by Dignitas, but they've not quite managed to make them happen here. Dignitas are going to group up. Let's see if they can make another push happen. This is the kind of gameplay that they want. So we see them milling about towards the bottom. Dignitas again roaming in big numbers here. They need to keep that poke comp together. We have seen Gragas able to just one, two with the QR on people. It has been a huge dominant and impact play, playing champion that is, for this tournament. Now back to
mid once again. Dignitas just wants to keep eyes on Team Solo mid everywhere. They have not let them get the roll comp. They have tried to capitalize on the mistakes, but TSM is making very few, as you said, Freak. They're yeah. making sure that they're up by four right now. The turrets kind of aren't going in their favor, but the map control isn't hugely in anyone's favor either. So right now, this is still anybody's game. Dignitas is still remembering what happened last game, but they gotta be proud that they are thwarting that in this game too. And the other thing cool thing here there for Dignitas that they can make it happen is they still managed to give themselves a oh nice steal there. That was extremely well done by Skara. He did it without a luck. No, he did have a ward. They saw them pull it, whether it was in the brush or not. He comboed it beautifully. Nice job there by Skara. Daras had stolen his golden buff. It was only fair that he traded one back. But so Dignitas have actually got themselves a really, really good late game composition. As long as they don't get caught out by Soul Shackle from Reginald, and they were very good in game one at not dying to that ability, that Dignitas can really pull this one late because they've got a Caitlyn who went Infinity Edge that's going to be Blood Boiled. Gragas has a lot of damage as well. They've got Janna for safety. Cutie Pie should not die in team fights. And because he has Eye Edge plus a Green Elixir right here, and he's got that Blood Boil, he's going to be a huge damage threat, more so than Chaos. Chaos went for mid-game damage. On Gordy, he went for a Trinity Force. So unless he goes for a very fast Infinity Edge himself, you're going to see a very big damage swing between these two attack damage carries. That's going to be a very significant uh, turn of events there. If the fights actually do go back in open field, it's going to be good for Dignitas. And we see, guys, they start moving in. Italy on that Rod of Ages. Going to start getting a little tanky now. Kind of being able to take a little bit more damage in these fights. She is going to have to pounce in and do a bit of melee if it gets down to it and the poke composition gets thrown out of there. So Caitlyn now with two new up. Very much a greater threat. If that Nunu goes down though, if I will dominate, gets pulled against uh, once again by the odd one. It's going to be very hard for them to capitalize on the poke comp, as I said before. It's got to be stressed. Nunu is a huge factor in this composition. Yeah, he's absolutely very, very important here if he gets pulled out. And of course, there's nothing here for Dignitas to stop that Skarner pull. Uh, if Janna tries to monsoon him back, he'll just pull someone farther away. Dominate does get binded here. They could try to go in. They go for a bit of damage, but no, he doesn't actually want to go for the Black Jewel and, and, and pull initiate. They're in fact just going to wait for now. A lot of health still coming in on Dominate. He's picked up a Kindle Gem and another Ruby Crystal. This might be the early Aegis here. The damage out of Dyrus, a nice job, a lot of poke here. But Suleiman does have Soraka, so they will sustain quite a bit. More poke coming off. Actually, this is a good initiation here for Dignitas. Everyone on Suleiman is about down to half health. They could absolutely go for some damage. Skara has a golem buff as well, so his explosive cast cooldown is very, very low. They definitely could jump in for something very soon. Well, this is a huge factor fight for TSM. You can see how hungry the odd one is, and everybody is waiting on the general's initiation right now. If he goes in and pulls somebody out, they are going to follow him into battle. Corky just dodging that javelin right there. Chaos almost took a chunk of his health, or lost a chunk of his health, I should say. There's the initiation. The Shirelius goes down to the double flash to get out of it, and the odd one is not able to pull back Skara. That was a really, really good read there by Skara. He knew he was in range for the Shirelius jump. They're going to go in anyway. Rezo's jumping in so much damage. They will break it, but they pulled in Skara. But it's not what you want right there. After the zero goes off, but Joy's going to keep him alive. Do they have the damage? Chaos taking a bit of pain, but Cutie Pie not going to make him die. Let's see if they have what it takes. Cutie Pie still getting chased down. Chaos very, very threatening here. And nope, TSM will walk away with two easy kills. They're going to walk back over to Dragon. A very big initiation there, and just look how much help TSM has after that fight. Also, only half mana, and Soraka's not infusing anybody right now. She's just doing her own thing, getting the HP back up and topping everybody off, as well as giving them mana. But during that fight, the wish went out. They were just able to keep everybody so sustained in the fight. The poke composition is not as effective when you're up in their face. Dignitas needs to pick these fights correctly. TSM is not making the mistakes they need. Yeah, they needed an earlier explosive cast in that battle. Star got jumped on and dominated without really the chance to answer for anything there that Solomid did. When they saw them start running in, when Reginald went for the Flash Ultimate, he should have immediately pushed everyone else backwards and had just Reginald alone against Team Dignitas. Dignitas has the ability to reset fights and push everyone backwards. And actually, here's something very interesting, though, about this lineup. So Reginald will typically Black Shield himself to not get pushed backwards if he initiates, which means he will be immune to explosive cast and Monsoon's knockback. Either Batoy or Skara goes for a chance ultimate, they can push everyone out and leave Reginald completely alone. 
Now Reginald does have Zonias. He'll be safe if he's alone like that. But they can completely stop the reinitiate from Solo Mid if they can knock back the rest of the lineup. That's what they need to do here in these battles. Because otherwise, the ability to just dive in from Solo Mid is too good. You saw the odd one crush Scar with the Impale. Again, if they had landed the explosive cast, he would have been fine. It's what Dignitas the needs to do. 203 farm on Chaos right now. We see Cutie Pie with 199 and then Infinity Edge finish. However, that BF Sword and Trinity Force on Chaos is going to allow him to just continuously burst down whoever he wants from the outside. Caitlyn is not going to get that Infinity Edge proc on her Q or her R, so it's going to be very difficult for that Infinity Edge to do them a lot of damage unless, like I said, they get into the middle of the fight, which is going to kind of destroy the synergy of their poke composition. TSM is really scaling this one into the late game right now, and it's not going to look good for Dignitas if they can't get a very strong fight and get a huge attack now. Well, they've got that on the Odd so much damage. Dominic with a great absolute zero. So much damage. Odd one falls. Reginald's low. Chaos in the mix. Dyer is very low as well. Nice knockback from Patoy with a barrel too much damage. Only Dominate is dead. Chaos has been exhausted. He will flash forward. Patoy, one hit, yes. He will pick that one up and it's now a two for one in Solomit's favor. Vigenta is not able to keep up in these fights. They need to get some more damage output somewhere. I don't know if they need another tank or what. But Solomit is able to run through even if the Abba gets initiated off. Even if he takes the front loaded first, Solomit can tank through it all. Dignitas not able to do that themselves. They put themselves too far into the jungle freak. Both Nunu and Janna went down out of range. Cutie Pie never even took a shot during that fight. Wow, they need Cutie Pie to take those attacks though. He is the major force here in these battles. AP Neely is going to do a little bit of damage once in a while with those javelins. Going into melee form is very scary against this lineup. She can be killed very quickly. Even despite having that Rod of Ages, Patoy, of course, is support dominant. He channeled the Absolute Zero, but that was the only damage he got out. After that, he was blown up right away. Cutie Pie needs to get himself into those fights to make that happen. Let's watch a replay of that last fight and see just what happened. Come in here, we see the initiation up on Dominate. Cutie Pie trying to deal as much damage as possible. The attacks are on, and they do eventually get enough damage that they will pick up the odd one. But then he is pushed a bit backwards. You can see him trying to deal damage to Dyrus, but it just doesn't quite matter. Dyrus disengages, and here you see Kaox left alone. No one is here to push out onto Kaox. No one's able to deal any damage. He can chase that one down for free. That's where that second kill came from. Is that TSM attack damage carry player actually able to fight in that battle? Cutie Pie got the one kill, but then stop attacking. Yeah, he was pushed out quite quickly. His team just needed him around the edge. Like you said, you need the AD carry in there. You're not going to get too much from Italy once she goes into melee form, and it's going to be very easy to be killed by that. Again, Zeke's coming out very fast. Very special on this one. His team's gaining a lot of benefit from the synergy of that attack speed and lifesteal for the entire team. Vladimir and Morgana both with two very nice core items. And also the Will of the Ancients going out to really round off the ability power for the team to give them all HP when they're doing that. That spell bam will come into play now. Something that QDP really needs right now, which is the last whisper. There was a lot of armor on this TSM lineup overall. Odd ones, you know, up in the front, being melee and has an Aegis of the Legion. Pretty much everyone on Dignitas, uh, sorry, on Solomid in an actual team fight going to have over 100 armor, and as you saw in the last battle, what took so long for Odin to die was that Astral Blessing from Soraka, which completely shut down Cutie Pie's damage output. He's going for what looks to be a Bloodthirster right now, but I think he instead needs the armor penetration. I'm going to try to jump in though, that Black Shield's still holding strong, and he's going to pull in Crumbs. Crumbs is not going to like this, he's going to try to jump out, Dyrus is around, Reginald goes for a Dark Binding, he will land it, perfect prediction there, the Explosive Cast comes out, so much damage being dealt. But no one has fallen just yet, except for now it's Trump who's died. And another Dark Bonding lands. Dominate not gonna like that one. Chaos takes that kill up. Again, Dignitas is forced to run away. Three on five. Come on, hit Sheen. So powerful with the Triforce. This just blows him up. They get the kills up. They now are chasing down Skara much out of mana. He uses one of his last body slams. Looks like he's going to be able to have that Drunken Rage on. He is gathering some back here. Cutie Pie making sure he soaks up the experience in the jungle. But TSF is on an all-out push with his bottom turret. It's already lost 10% of its health, and it's going to drop in a matter of seconds. With Reginald coming around the backside to try and make another impact play for his team. That binding was so huge to come out and really stop them from getting away. Wow, just the great team coming from Solo Mid. And this is a great early game play overall. TSM is playing this final exactly the right way. They have made, I think, good decision after good decision after great decision. They have set themselves up 
for a 2-0 victory right now. Wichita's needs to convert this game into something good. They need to get themselves back on equal footing. And Judy Pie needs to turn up the heat. Skara needs to get the damage output as well. I'm hoping for their sake that he goes for a driver to the death trap. I don't think he'll do enough if he goes up by our grasp. Thinking about these to pull a lot of damage out of nowhere. Trump's close to death cap. They are going to keep accelerating his items. There's a chance for kills out of nowhere. There's a lot of it's very bursty for Digitas. They can get kills out of nowhere if they make the right plays. But Suleiman's going to keep accelerating as they take this other dragon down. So we've got about 7,500 gold lead now going to Team Solomon. 10 to 1. Your 30 minute mark of this matchup just hit. And it's only going to be 4 to 3 turrets. Right now we saw TSM in the base of Dignitas controlling the entire game, 13, 14,000 gold up and just not letting Dignitas even breathe. They were able to come back in a few fights, which means even when TSM has the lead, Dignitas is still not out of it. So what does that mean for them now, Freak, that the game is pretty much even and they can still go back and forth either way? Well, what Dignitas needs to do is just, just catch up, get gold, catch up and make that late game fight happen. I don't think they can really play the aggressive right now. The good thing for them is they can play defensively. They have a lot of long-range tools to get rid of minions. If Team Sola mid tries to play uh, aggressively and, and poke down turrets from range, Dignitas has a lot of good tools to make that not really happen for them. We saw them playing defensively against counter Election Gaming yesterday, and they were able to hold their base off uh, pretty successfully. So it, it's Dignitas wanting to push this game another 10 minutes into the future. At 10 minutes into the future, they're going to be in really good shape. They're gonna have a lot more damage up with that last whisper. I'm hoping for GD5's sake is that next pick up there. We see more items completed. Now it is Death Flyer Grasp here for Skara. They're gonna rely, I guess, on single target kills here. Maybe it's gonna be the odd one, but the odd one has picked up a Negatron Cloak. He'll be very hard to kill, and no one else from Solo Mid is really initiating in the front. We're gonna see if Dignitas can deal enough damage. The Lizard Buff actually been taken away from Cutie Pie. Dominate actually stole that one. And I think at this stage in the game, they really do want Cutie Pie to have that. A couple of missteps still being made here by Dignitas. Yeah, for, if, as we can see, just what's going on in these builds, TSM has three auras working with them. They have that Zeke's, they have the Will of the Ancients, as well as the Aegis picked up on the odd one. No auras for Dignitas. The fight initiation goes out and it won't even be able to go and lock down the Soul Shackle. They lose special, or they lose Jenna in that one, rather, the Toy will go down. This is just the great opportunity that TSM wanted. Managed to jump in, give themselves a five on four, and they're gonna go for the parent attempt here. We'll see if the house can stop them. This is gonna be a make or break fight. Skara walking around the left hand side, might go for a steal instead. Everyone on the house playing a bit more defensively. Skara puts the barrel down. Can he break this one? He's gonna try, not gonna do enough damage. Almost gets it with the javelin, and now Crumb's gonna get jumped on. Can Chaos get a slow there? Dominate still trying to run. Hell, we will flash back. There is that blood boil. The Shirelli is going off as well. Looks like they will be safe. The Gintas did not really have vision with that section, which made it very difficult. The Gintas has not lost any kills in a while, so they will be able to regroup as a 5-on-5 five five defending their base. Skara, uh-oh, you walked into a Kayok. This is not good for you at all. Kayok picked that kill up. Missed that there from that Gragas player. This is not good for the Gintas. No, that's just... Kaox knowing exactly what he can do. Even with the Deathfire Grasp and the amount of damage that Skara could do, he knew he would keep himself sustained and he knew he had the burst damage to take that kill down. TSM is really getting into their own game now and it does not look like Dignitas is going to be able to turn this one around. However, they still have what it takes to do that. 10,000 gold down, we have seen more of a deficit and we have seen these teams come back to win. They are in this spot for a reason. The highest caliber play of League of Legends here in North America. Team Solo mid to take out Dignitas, but like we said before, they are not going to go quietly and they want to bring this to a game three. Yeah, this game is going to play out a bit like Game 1 did, where TSM has now picked out all the other turrets and they want to go for the aggression. They're going to have a lot of map control overall. They're going to have the ability to take down Dragon and Baron after Dragon and Baron. But Dignitas, they again have this late game ability to them, and they have a really good way of crushing out mini waves. I think even better than they did in Game 1. Dignitas can absolutely stall this game out and collect themselves and get themselves some items. Now, PewDiePie still not getting, that last whisper, not getting that last whisper just yet. As a finished Bloodthirster, has a zeal right now, but it's still going to be hard for Cutie Pie to deal meaningful damage in a team fight. Skara has also delayed his death cap a bit. I'm hoping for his sake that that is next right there. 
they need some more just all out damage output. That is the one stat that Dignitas needs is to be able to burn through the sustain that Dyrus and especially to put themselves through, to burn through those shields of Reginald and Odd One. If Dignitas can actually burn through individual targets, they again have turrets to their favor. They can fight from far away. If they can deal enough damage from far away, they can turn a fight into a five on four. And and when it's a 5 on 4, you've got equal gold at that point, and you can really make the fight happen. That's what Dignitas needs to do, so if they can actually execute. Freak, this next fight could be absolutely huge. Each team has every summoner spell, each team has every ultimate up. They are waiting to go into this fight fully charged on both sides. The 5 on 5 not yet had by both teams. We do see that Reginald is kind of wandering off with his team right now, and he has been a huge factor in being able to lock down Dignitas in these team fights. So being pushed off right now, you can see how weary TSM is fighting without Reginald. Yeah, they don't want to jump in without their fifth member. He runs around in the backside, and he's going to eventually regroup here by getting a couple of stacks of Love Thurser, so he's not maxed already. And he's actually just getting some free gold at that. And TSM, they said, well, all the outer turrets are down. So we have to go for inhibitor somewhere. Let's go for that mid lane. And they're up there. Team Odd One in the front. Chaos with the Black Shield is going to tank up a couple of those traps. You can see he doesn't get rooted when he's got the Black Shield because it makes him immune to crowd control effects. So he needs the Javelin to be able to one-shot make it down. They're trying to keep their turret alive. A lot of us coming down. Zyra's in the front. Takes the Javelin. He's been shielded by Jonathan, but it doesn't matter. And there's the pull on Ascara. Ascara's not going to like this. Gets bursted down. And Dominic's going to fall as well. Sullivan looking for the kill here. He picked up two kills. He's going to be able to back off. And Chaos does not look like he wants to be stopped. The inhibitor falls down. Sullivan will run to this top lane. And it looks like they are happy to backdoor it. The odd one up in the front. Having to take that up. So ran to his omen and Aegis armor. Down to one third health. And they're still going for this one. Siren is getting himself as well. That turret falls. The inhibitor is now available for Team Solo mid. Five members strong. They've got 25 seconds until Dignitas is going to have their own five members. And they are still pushing through. They've now run to the bottom half of the map. They want to take another turret down. Just like last game, make it three inhibitors to zero. Kitty by trying to poke loses a lot of health against Cyrus, and they're gonna want to bring this turret down as well. Solidifying somewhat of the lead here. They do have everything down in their favor. The power play hugely in favor of Team Solo Mid right now. And Cutie Pie doing what he can to backdoor by himself. But he's going to be taking too much damage without too many minions there. Again, waiting for a lane to come up. Crumbs has also joined that as Cutie Pie back. Actually, that was Crumbs there in the first place. Nidalee looks nothing like Caitlyn. <laughs> They're both female. It's okay. No, you're good. You're good. Dire Threat running away there. He's getting he's like there by the golden buff. He's going to go for a steal on this. Dignitas has pinged it out, but they don't know where Solomid is. He's not going to play too aggressively to stop this. But it's going to be a very successful golden buff steal. This Baron buff coming up in the very, very near future. 29 minutes and 23 seconds. That is not far away at all. From for the nice who's going to come back for a uh, little comeback dragon there. 1,000 gold to be gained by his team if he does pick up this kill. Should be pretty safe for him overall. He managed to steal the gold buff himself. It's a good place for him to be. Be a little bit of a gold equalizer. Dignitas is going to like that advantage. He'll hop himself over the wall. But TSM, fully elixir. Just look how shiny they are. Buying those elixirs, having them glow with that, with those extra stats overall. It's a two minute window until Baron comes up. They're going to probably push without that advantage. I don't think they need it at this point. They're up almost 12,000 gold. Up 14 kills to one. Poor Odd One, the only feeder on the team with a death. We're going to see if TSM can close this game out. We're going to get some more minion waves here. Let's see if they can toss and hold on. There we go, the Odd One once again, staying out in front, commanding the lead in what they're going to do. If anybody's going to be in front of him, it's going to be Reginald flashing, flashing with Soul Shackles. You see them somewhat backing off, Dyrus getting somewhat aggressive. Keeping his tides of blood up as he taunts that Dignitas team. They now start to breach the Nexus turrets. The Siege minions are flowing in from the top lane. They're going to be coming in from all lanes quite soon. And that million minion siege is going to be very hard for Dignitas to stop. It looks like they may be able to thwart this for now. Every 30 seconds, as you know in League of Legends, the minions spawn. So they're going to get a little bit of help each time they come out of the Nexus. But they got to be careful. Once they overrun them again, TSM is going to have a field day with these turrets. Yeah, Kaos taking a bit of damage there. The ultimate coming out. They're gonna go in for the push. One turret has fallen down, and they're gonna just dive in on a team solo mid. The Zonia's from Reginald. One kill's gonna happen there. Legendary Kaos. Reginald's gonna fall down as well. But the crowd erupts because team solo mid looks like they will not be stopped, and they will win the North American Regional.